Hello, my name is Scott Bryson, and I am an Applications Engineer for Texas Instruments Position Sensing Product Line. In this video, we will discuss how integrated angle calculations are made, and how this process reduces calculation latency when determining angular position of a rotating magnet. Many applications require angle detection using contact-free sensing solutions. Products including industrial robots and machinery, Automotive accessories, such as sunroofs and white good dial controls, all can utilize angle inputs and feedback to assist with overall system control. Efforts to minimize the computation requirement on the microcontroller help to optimize system functionality while reducing system latency. When calculating the angle of a rotated magnet, it is necessary to capture sinusoidal inputs which are 90 degrees out of phase. This can be done using two one-dimensional sensors, 90 degrees mechanically separated, or by using a single 3D magnetic sensor monitoring orthogonal components of the magnetic field vector. Here we would observe X component in blue and the Y component in red. Devices such as TMAG5170 and TMAG5273 are capable of performing such measurements and additionally have an integrated angle calculator. Comparing to a unit circle, our magnetic field inputs over one full rotation closely follow the sine and cosine functions. As a result, angle calculations are commonly calculated in the host microcontroller using the arctangent function, since the tangent of an angle is equivalent to the ratio of the sine and cosine of that same angle. To account for the sine of the inputs, this is commonly done using the arctan2 function built into many coding libraries. For instance, consider the case where the following inputs are observed by the sensor. Here we observe a rotation of about 49.5 degrees and a resulting vector shown on the unit circle. While performing this calculation is straightforward when the vector components have equal amplitudes, integrating the calculation using the Cortic algorithm will reduce overall system latency and allow the device to directly apply integrated corrections for gain and offset. CORDIC stands for Coordinate Rotation Digital Computer. It is an algorithm whose origins date back hundreds of years, but has been more recently optimized for calculations using digital logic structures. The basic concept of the algorithm is a series of vector rotations aimed at producing a vector with a single directional component equal in magnitude to the original. This is done through a series of rotations following the pattern of a binary search. For example, we might target rotating to the plus or minus x-axis. The search will require determining the quadrant of the vector each step and then rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise until the search is complete. Depending on the quadrant, the vector will always be within 90 degrees of this requirement. Suppose we use a vector with an initial angle of 49.5 degrees. Knowing that we need to rotate by a total of 90 degrees or less, the first rotation will be 45 degrees, and we will proceed each iteration by rotating by one half of the previous step. Checking our resulting position and determining the direction for the next rotation, we observe that the new vector will ultimately converge on the x-axis as the rotation steps are halved each time. Here we see that after only six steps, we have nearly converged to the final answer with only 0.28 degrees of error. The algebra behind such a procedure is fairly straightforward. To rotate a vector by a known angle, we can utilize the following vector transformation, where alpha represents our target angle step. The resulting system of equations appears as follows. If we then factor the cosine of alpha from each equation, the result for each transformation takes on this new form. We are now left with two trigonometric equations resulting from our known rotation angle that can be used on any vector to perform this transformation. To expedite the binary search for our target angle, we must determine a way to assess the value of both cosine and tangent of alpha. Let's begin with the cosine. Considering the iterative rotation procedure, each step of the algorithm will transform the vector by a known value. This means that over the course of the entire process, we can obtain a fixed cumulative product. 
This scalar represented as m can be predetermined based on any known pattern of step sizes and may be applied at the end of our algorithm once the required number of clockwise or counterclockwise rotations are complete. For now, let's temporarily ignore the cosine factor and shift focus to the remaining tangent portion of the equation. With our new simplified equations, let's examine the impact of a true binary search. For each step, we can calculate the new vector component based on the tangent of our specific rotation angle. Here we can see that as alpha is halved, each step, that the resulting tangent value progressively approaches zero. This pattern is the most efficient process to determine any angle, but it would require accessing a lookup table of known tangent values for every transformation step. While this is the ideal step pattern, let's look at what happens if we use a different pattern that similarly converges to zero with step sizes slightly larger than what we see here. Consider instead, if we were to replace tangent of alpha by a factor of two raised to the negative nth power. We see that similar to tangent, this approaches zero as the number of iterations increases. Also, the value of this factor provides us with large enough step sizes to accomplish the full rotation to the x-axis while simultaneously allowing the algorithm to converge. The new step size is no longer a perfect binary search and may require a step or two more to converge, but this is simpler to implement using digital logic. We can perform this adjustment using just a rightward bit shift. Bringing everything back together, we can now define the logic for this calculation of both angle and magnitude of the starting vector. We must first define a variable that will indicate the direction of rotation. This must be determined each step by checking which quadrant the vector is in before executing either the clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. We will remember that we defined a scalar m to help account for the cosine factor, which will be needed to ensure the final vector magnitude is correct. We can define the next iterative step for both vector components to follow the simplified form with direction and a rightward bit shift applied. Angle, therefore, is equal to the sum of all the predetermined angle shifts, and magnitude is the final one-dimensional vector divided by m. The final algorithm follows these steps for our original vector. There are multiple benefits of the Cordic algorithm. Firstly, it is simpler to implement in a complete system with data already processed to a useful angular output, and it relieves the microcontroller from being required to perform this task. In addition, the entire process is executed quite quickly. Let's first consider the total additional time for the microcontroller to gather the data after the magnetic field has been sampled and to process the result. In a system reading from TMAG5170 using a 5 MHz SPI clock, the MCU would have to perform two 32-bit reads, each requiring a minimum of 6.4 microseconds. There would be some additional delay between each read. Then, the MCU would be required to perform the necessary arctangent calculation. In the end, the angle information is available to the MCU after some time period greater than 12.8 microseconds. Depending on operating efficiency and MCU speed, this delay might increase in a significant way. If instead, we allow the device to integrate the Cordic algorithm, the device can accomplish the complete calculation in about 3 microseconds. Then, only a single SPI read is required to gather the angle information. Here, the time that is required to determine the angle information is predetermined, and the NCU is not burdened by this task. As the rotation speed of the magnet increases, this delay will represent a fixed error that becomes increasingly more significant. All efforts to reduce this delay benefit overall system accuracy. For instance, consider a magnet spinning at a low speed of 100 RPM. This is equivalent to 600 degrees per second and a 3 microsecond delay represents only 1.8 milladegrees of error. 
If that rotation speed is increased to 5,000 RPM, the delay now results with about 0.1 degrees of change. Again, 3 microseconds here assumes no additional delay between read events or in the arctangent calculation. To learn more about angle sensing, please refer to the following resources. Absolute angle measurements for rotational motion using Hall effect sensors, angle measurement with multi-axis linear Hall effect sensors, and linear Hall effect sensor angle measurement theory, implementation, and calibration. Additionally, please consider using the 2D angle error calculator, which emulates the quartic algorithm with pure sinusoidal inputs to estimate the resulting angle errors and the Magnetic Sensing Proximity Tool for contactless distance measurements, which can help estimate magnetic flux density, known as B-field, for several types of motion, including hinge, slide-by, and head-on approach, using both cylinder and bar magnet types. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching. For more information and videos on magnetic sensors, please visit ti.com slash Hall Effect.